Uh, well, I'm a barista and a union organizer here at Starbucks, uh, working with Workers United to organize Pace Boulevard. Well, one thing I really wanted to do as we, um, as we're all casting our ballots, we have a mail-in election going on right now, um, is really show the workers here the support that we've been getting from the community uh, and invite people out to show their support any way they can. Um, whether that's coming by, buying a cup of coffee and telling the workers there that you support the union or coming out here with signs and spreading the good word. Um, at this point, you know, people in our store are mailing in their ballots. I got mine yesterday. I'm gonna mail it when I leave here. Um, you know, we're really in the final stages before we get into whether or not we win this thing, and I think we will. Um, we're very confident right now. So right now, I believe there's 26 people in the store. Um, a few come and go, you know, it's a, it is a Starbucks job, so there's some bit of turnover. Um, but right now it's 26. So it started in Buffalo and Arizona um, with workers uh, organizing their stores uh, with Workers United. And since then, there's just been a lot of locations across the country. It's over 200 at this point um, who are uh, who have already petitioned. Um, and a lot of them have already won. Um, in Massachusetts especially, there's been a lot of wins recently. Um, for us, we just kind of, I saw the ongoing movement and I bought it up to other people in the store and a lot of people felt that yes, it would be helpful um, in solving some of the issues we've had at the store and also just improving things that, you know, do with standard of living, stuff like wages, stuff like benefits, uh, things that are very important to everyone. And, you know, that's a big reason why I think everyone should fight for unions. They can all improve their quality of life. Well, wages and benefits are definitely up there in terms of things that we really want. Um, as, you know, the years have gone on, there's been a fight for $15 minimum wage, and it's been going on so long that it's no longer a living wage at all. Um, so trying to get ourselves a good standard of living just from the mo money we make and also making sure that management is beholden to um, upkeeping the store, making sure that things like our plumbing, things like our equipment are well maintained. Um, those are all very important to us, just making sure that the store operates well, and that's how we can best serve our customers and do our job. I think it's been a very, honestly, like fun process for me. Um, I've had a great time doing it, um, getting to, you know, learn about the organizing uh, field out in Rhode Island and see all, you know, the people here are doing great work, um, both, you know, in government and outside of government. It's been great. I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, we'll note the results on June 14th. Um, the last day for us to mail in is the 13th. We got our ballots mailed on Monday. Um, so, you know, we'll have, um, we'll be having like, you know, a small get together with some of the uh, workers there um, on the 14th just to the election results come in. Where will those election results be announced? Um, I believe they do like a Zoom live stream. Oh, or Zoom something. live stream. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You know, it's the current year. <laughs> sure. Sure. I guess. What are your thoughts on like the outcome? Are you hopeful that uh, you'll be successful, or are you, yeah, I'm, what are the most likelihood? I'm feeling very confident going into this. Um, I think that a lot of people have um, really seen how Starbucks is willing to retaliate to their workers and they see that um, this isn't a company that really cares about you. Um, there's a lot of good optics for Starbucks with, you know, their comprehensive health care and things like that. Um, but, you know, you look at their reactions to dissent and you can see that, you know, they're firing people, they're, um, you know, retaliating with cut hours, things like that. Uh, my store has been generally pretty okay, but personally, like, I feel like I've been retaliated against by my former manager, um, you know, with the... What was that? Um, so I got, they put together, um, they like announced that they were going to tighten down on rules that were technically already in place but never enforced, things like dress code, things like um, cell phone usage, um, you know, rules that weren't really, that were there on paper but no one was paying attention to. Um, and when those were put in place, I was written up the next day as, you know, the one person who's been in the newspapers about this stuff. Right. Um, so for me, it felt transparent and obvious, but, um, you know, they said otherwise. Um, so I felt retaliated against, but, you know, that's um, one event. Um, I uh, feel like there's others, you know, who support this and uh, be successful in the vote. 
In the store, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I have a group around me of, you know, other people who are working in the store who are also, you know, helping uh, make sure sure people are informed and educated about everything um, you know the uh, thing about um, this sort of like fight for it is it's mostly just about making sure people know their rights and know like the full truth uh, Starbucks isn't uh, isn't shy of spreading half truths that make us look bad um, things like saying that you know you can potentially lose benefits, which is only true if the people in the store ask for an exchange of one thing for another, which we probably won't do. Um, you know, making sure that people actually have a comprehensive understanding of the process, um, rather than just a kind of fear monger view of it. Well, I think right now is a great moment for it just because there's a lot of energy building around it. I mean, the work of Chris Smalls and Amazon is insanely um, impactful. I don't think that can be understated really how amazing that achievement is for there to be an Amazon labor union. Um, but alongside that, you know, I think a good big reason Starbucks was kind of a, you know, the first one to really get this big wave going is just because Starbucks makes an effort to hire progressive voices and then in turn they did something progressive they didn't really like. Um, so with, you know, this current generation, I think it's, um, you know, it's a lot of people who are feeling very um, not represented by change in government and law, and they're seeing that this is a way for them to make change in their life and their community without just resorting to voting every two years. Um, you know, I know a lot of people who are involved in like the Amazon Labor Union, they're people who used to be involved with uh, AOC or with Bernie Sanders, people like that. Um, so, you know, I think there's a big push towards not just going through enacting change politically, but enacting change um, in your workplace and through like mutual aid and stuff like that. No, one thing I've kind of uh, come to see is that um, I've gotten a lot of support online and through like email and uh, Twitter that I don't think is really shown to the workers here. Um, so I wanted to really hold an event that can show people that there's a community that is willing to back them up and um, that there's support for it in Rhode Island. Um, I also want like people to be able to see just in general in other stores that you know this isn't a lonely fight, that there are people backing you up. Um, I'll back you up. Um, you Has know. there been any response from the company to your particular uh, um, stores union organizing efforts? I mean, not too much. Um, there's been, you know, some signs posted in the store, um, but nothing public about our store specifically. What do you mean, signs? Um, stuff saying, you know, signs in the store, just uh, detailing union dates and stuff like that, but also saying that you should vote yes, uh, or vote no, I mean. Uh, I have a sign that says vote yes. Um, Did they give any reason why you should vote no? Um, it was, they didn't give any reasoning on the sign. They would say, um, you know, make sure you get the full facts from your store manager. Um, and I think a big reason for that is that if you state your focus reasoning on a sign, you could pretty easily say that it's wrong. But if it's one-on-one -on -one behind closed doors, it's hard harder to combat this sort of thing. Um, I know that they've said stuff about how, um, you know, there's been talk from Howard Schultz with union stores not being able to get new wage increases or new benefits and stuff like that, um, which is, some argue illegal. Um, uh, many like lawyers would say that, not just uh, armchair lawyers like myself. Um, so, you know, they've threatened stores across the country with, um, you know, kind of leaving us behind as they increase wages to dissuade other stores from also organizing. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on how the bargaining process goes. And, you know, bargaining a contract can improve year after year. Um, so for us, right now, we're trying to aim for things that will directly improve our lives. Stuff like making sure our schedules are set in stone more than like two weeks in advance or one week in advance. Um, making sure that we're getting those pay increases that have been promised to us already. Um, and making sure that, you know, our store is being well maintained, uh, which is something that Starbucks should be doing just for their own business. You know, it's really not uh, fair to us or the customers that things like uh, ice machine being broken for two months and not being fixed is delaying drinks, you know? That's um, an improvement not just for us, but for the customers as well.
I saw in the story you were talking about staffing problems, like you were short staffed sometimes. Yeah, that was a bigger problem a few, um, probably like a month or two ago. Um, since then, we've had a few more people join the store and we're doing a bit better. Uh, and scheduling has gotten a bit more consistent, but we still have issues with uh, staffing mornings and uh, with callouts uh, completely disrupting the entire day or if one person doesn't show then the store isn't able to get its morning tasks done and that affects the rest of the day. Do you think unionization would be able to help with those kind of issues? Sorry? Do you think unionization would be able to help with those kind of issues? Yeah, I mean unionization, one of the best things about it is that like bargaining a contract you can really use it to do pretty much anything you want to do. Um, just with, you know, you have to make sure that obviously the Obviously, the employer has to agree to it, but, you know, a contract, the big reason why Starbucks Workers United is doing this store by store instead of district, not just because it'd be harder to do it by district, but also because each store can get what they feel they need. So whether another store feels that, you know, they don't really need protections in regards to making sure their store is upkept, they can, you know, instead argue for other things. So that's one of the big advantages of it. It's kind of a multi-tool. Okay. Briefly, I guess, you know, why do you think people have been receptive here to this? I mean, your your fellow are, workers, yeah. particularly. I mean, people have been receptive because I think a lot of them feel that they're not being um, treated fairly in terms of how management has treated some people. Um, and I think a lot of people see that even if management can change as it has, that doesn't mean that management can't change again for the worse in the future. Um, so one thing I've always said to people is that unionization is like a long-term solution for every short-term problem you have, um, where you know you get to set your uh, what you're entitled to at your work in stone and law and a contract, as opposed to it just being at the discretion of the employer. Uh, and that protects things such as your benefits, making sure that those aren't you know taken away just because they say like this doesn't seem beneficial to the company anymore. Um, you know, things like the ASU partnership and the trans healthcare, that's the sort of thing that a lot of people can't really live without, you know, having that sort of thing be at risk of being taken away just because a company decides it's not really profitable anymore is, you know, kind of a scary thought. So Starbucks, I guess those are pretty good benefits, would you, would you agree, I guess, for a job like this? Or? Well, yeah, but it's also a matter of how you get those benefits and how they're uh, maintained. Like I've had people who go through the ASU for education who've had to throw their paid time off in like a grinder just because they didn't have enough hours because their hours were cut. Um, protecting things like that is important. Making sure that you know people can keep their benefits even if Starbucks is doing something to make it so they can't. Um, talking 